our bespoke uh, solutions for Northern Ireland and about Britain's future relation ship in general with Europe, but the problem is really that we're no clearer on what any of on any workable bespoke solutions. The British talk about you know ab about not wanting a border, about maintaining relations, about about all of these things. And I actually I did say this to, to Michelle Barney at the time and also indeed to Kiefer Hofstadt that I'm not sure that we can just leave it solely to the UK to come up with proposed solutions. Um, I think this it is their responsibility, yes they have decided to leave. But I think we also have, have, can have a role uh, to be inventive in this regard. You, you mentioned a figure that is very stark and that many of us have been mentioned. The border is crucially important. Let's take that as, an, as a given. Good Friday Agreement, common travel area and the rights of our citizens north and south. Absolutely. But the 60 to 65 billion euro worth of trade and the east-west-west-east relationship I have a concern as well that that's not as greatly understood, that my concern is that Europe will feel we'll resolve the border and that's the Irish issue solved. It's not. Uh, and it is not in any way, shape or form because there are tens of thousands of jobs. I don't have to tell you, Minister, you know that. So really we're, we're getting down to the, the real uh, get, crucial part of negotiations fast. now. And I just want to, want to see whether Thank we're you. prepared as best we can for all eventualities. Thank you, Minister Colney, a minute. As you'd expect, um, we are looking at our own ideas uh, as well as asking Britain to come forward with theirs. Um, but I think that the onus is on, is on the UK. They're the ones that have decided to leave. Uh, that decision is what's causing all of this issue, you know, all of these issues. Um, but look, we're all in this together, whether we like it or not. Uh, we need to contribute to finding solutions, and we will. But I think it's important that, that, that we're very clear on the parameters within which those solutions are found. And those parameters, I think, are now very clearly outlined in a working paper from the, from the task force, which is very consistent with our position, which is that the solutions here have to ensure that there's not going to be regulatory divergence in Northern Ireland from, um, um, from Ireland. I mean, let me just give you a practical example of that. You know, if, if, for example, state aid rules that apply in Ireland don't apply in Northern Ireland because they're EU state aid rules, and the British government decides to help business in Northern Ireland by grant aiding uh, a fish processing plant north of the border, but we can't do the same south of the border uh, because, of, uh, uh, because of state aid rules limitations, all of a sudden you're starting to look at an unfair playing field then on the island of Ireland. Uh, and that creates the need for checks for border issues and so on. So regulatory divergence is a very serious thing okay. for business uh, and, uh, and within the parameters uh, of no regulatory divergence we we'll, of course will have an open mind in terms of solutions. I, I, would, I have to say I find myself I, I would agree with you certainly and I, and I would just put on the record again that we don't believe that the Irish position should be diluted in any way but what does uh, hearten me somewhat is that we are looking at some of our own ideas. Yes the responsibility is with Britain. My concern though is some within the British within the British Cabinet that I have heard of late as well, who I wouldn't really trust with looking after my local football team, let alone looking after a position for a solution for, uh, for the North of Ireland and for the future relations between Britain, the European Union and, and Ireland North and South. So it is, it is our responsibility too to try to be constructive and to try to look at solutions because that, that, that piece which you, which you rightly mentioned about the the east-west and west-east trade is crucially important in all of this, and we are down to the crucial part of those negotiations. So really I would hope and my party would hope that, that common sense will prevail too, but no dilution of the Irish position. I agree with you on that, and we should remain firm in, in, in our own position that we stand firmly with the EU27. But really I, I think that there are some who feel that this process can just go on forever. It can't. Uh, you know, it's starting to have effect. Brexit is biting already. Yeah, no, no, no.